Hello, I'm Joe Dillette. Uh I'm making a mantle, and it's a combination of a deep relief and a shallow relief. And so, uh, in this video, I'd like to talk about the texturing mainly. In a relief carving, determining what the depth of all the objects are, it's where it falls on the ground. Uh, so you, I, what I do is I go to the deepest depth and then uh, decide where the horizon is and then I slope the ground from the foreground to the background. And so all these objects have to sit on the ground and so wherever that slope of the ground is, that's where that object depth is. So I did the wood pile kind of on perspective, and uh, uh, so right along here the wood pile has to sit on the ground. The objects, I like to slope out a little bit. So like this wood pile is a little bit deeper here than it is here. It comes out of the picture a little bit. Not enough to be noticeable. The same with this cabin. The cabin is deeper here than it is here. Here it's almost out to the face, and here it's uh, it in more. But it doesn't look like it's falling out. If you exaggerate it, yes, it would look like it's falling out. Then you have to move it back a little. This is going to be a bird. I will draw that bird in. So I make the edge thin so it looks nice and delicate and that. But as soon as I start going in, I thicken it up right away. So you can see it's kind of plunging down to make that edge strong. So I will do the same here. I split that out pretty quickly and then I just go and smooth it up. There's a little bit of light reflecting out. What I want is for the back background here to swallow the light. I want to create a deep shadow. So there's no flat surface to reflect the light out. I want to come at an angle and a point down in the bottom here. So here there's a flat surface and light is reflecting out. So I'm going to shape it so it's pointed in and then the light will swallow in there. It won't reflect back out. So the next I'm going to profile the bird and then I'll start working on the evergreen. To profile that bird to profile that bird, the first thing I do is I draw it in. I'm just going to darken my lines a little bit. Then I take a small gouge and I just start nibbling away until I work right up to the lines. I want this bird to stand out a little bit more. So this delicate thin edge, I'm going to move that back. So it'll be actually sunk in, but I'm going to do it so gradual that it won't be noticeable. So now I just go straight back with my 
outline profiling it. This area is a little bit too flat, so I'm just going to round that a little bit, narrow that neck down, bring it up to the head. These little evergreens back here are going to be a Norway pine. This is going to be a uh, white pine in front. Norway pine is also referred to as a red pine. So on the Norway pine, the branches go up a little bit. The white pine are kind of straight across. And by rocking the tool, I can put in the leaves, the uh, more detail on the branches so it doesn't look just straight. All this grass was from rocking the um, gouge, like a number three gouge in there like this. That same number three gouge to put the fine hair on the dough, also rocking, but just in a very light mode. When I rock it this way it makes the lines, it's actually cutting lines in this direction. If this is too uh, narrow to rock, I can slide the tool. Sliding it will also make light cuts. Then to kind of break up some of the individual branches, I can go in with my mallet and I just tap. I can do the same here. I get the initial shape, some rounding into it. tap in the upward direction and then the bottom of the branch is not flat so I tap on the bottom of the branch. Seldom do I ever use just one tool to make the texture. This here is kind of coarse. I can take it and uh, even it out by taking another number three gouge and just going over the top. It does a little smoothing. It adds a little different texture. Starts making it look like branches. So I'm just looking at how the light is playing off of this. Not all the evergreen trees are the same. Some are the jack pines that might be at the ends here. Uh, uh, so uh, some are scotch pines and uh, Douglas fir. So there's uh, all different kinds. These I'm all going to make Norway pines because they kind of self-seeded back there. And so I'm going to cluster them all together. Their branches are sloping upward a little bit. I like to alternate textures. In the corral, there's almost no texturing. The texturing here of the water is different than the grass. Texturing on the deer is different. The stone is different from here. The roof is different. So uh, uh, I like alternating the textures just like in nature. Trying to get it looking like some of the branches are sticking right towards us. I also texture the sides of the tree as it's going back to defining some of the branches. By experimenting with different tools you can copy about any texture in nature. This here evergreen tree here, this uh, white spruce, looks uh, a lot different 
than the one down on this other end. There's a lot of difference between those texturing. The just evergreen trees themselves had a lot of different texture. This is in the shallow relief at the end of the mantle. In doing the shallow relief on the ends, you follow the same steps. So I'm making my stop cuts here around the drawing. So I have a V-tool, small V-tool, that I'm making the stop cuts with. Now here I've got a jack pine, that kind of like a Dr. Seuss evergreen that kind of uh, droops over. and I love the shape of those. While I'm taking it down to depth, then I can start doing some of the contouring. So get some of the roundness of the tree. Being a shallow relief, there isn't much room to work with. But I don't want any flat spots on the front, so I'm still doing some rounding. And I start walking the chisel so it cuts side to side as it's also going up. I'm trying to get some of the individual branches to show a little heavier texture. Then I will put the light texture over the top of that. I generally finish the texturing before I do the final smoothing in the background because when I do the finished texturing I also nick the background a little bit. The lines are a little bit too uh, uniform and uh, uh, what I'm going to do is go in with the V-tool and I'm just going to kind of break up that monotony. Put a little texture over the top of it. Then just rocking this number three gouge again. We'll take some of those loose chips out of there. Three, two, one. In preparing the mantle for finish, I'm first going to do some sanding. I've got some imperfections like the planer left a ridge of wood here. And uh, so the type of finish I'm going to put on is going to be a varnish. It's a Minwax Helmsman indoor-outdoor polyurethane varnish. And this is, uh, I am, the first coat I'm going to put on is a gloss because it really won't end up being a gloss because that's the first seal coat. And then I will put a satin finish over it. Now to the varnish, I want to mix in a stain. Uh, this is a Minwax uh, stain and this is a golden oak stain. So I just want to tint it down a little bit. The reason why I'm not putting the stain directly on the mantle without increasing the viscosity uh, of the stain. The stain, Minwax stain, is a combination of a dye stain and a pigment stain. And the dye stain is a very low viscosity that soaks into the ingrain uh, much further than it does on the side. The pigment stain part is the part that lays on the top. So by mixing it with the varnish, I raise the viscosity to make all of the stain being a pigment stain. Because I've got a lot of uh, exposed ingrain in the carving, because that's all we're doing is we're exposing ingrain, I don't want it to be a dye stain. I want it to be a pigment stain and not to soak in. The reason for that is that it will look blotchy because it gets much darker on the ingrain and the ingrain of all the carving than it does on the flat grain. And so uh, that will make my carving look blotchy. Another way to get around that is a sanding sealer. But I choose not to use the sanding sealer. I just raise the viscosity of the stain and that evens it out. Now, also, I am going to be using a burnt umber 
and that is going to darken the shadows. So when the varnish is wet and the stain with, with the stain, when that's wet, I've got a little small artist brush that I'm going to be increasing the shadows. So I'm just going to darken it just a little bit more. It'll still look like natural wood, but some of the uh, shadows will be darkened. In doing the uh, sanding, first thing I do is I take that ridge off with a scraper. And I'm going to show you uh, how to sharpen and use a scraper. I'm using a regular putty knife for a scraper. So I'll show you how to sharpen that scraper. I have a grinding wheel and a buffing wheel. For this scraper, because I'm just doing rough scraping on it, I am just going to use the grinding wheel. And I'm going to go perpendicular to the wheel here because I want to raise a heavy burr because it's that burr that's going to be doing the cutting. So I'm not sharpening it like a knife. What I'm doing is grinding the end perpendicular and to raise a heavy burr, hopefully on both ends, so I can scrape one side when I lose that burr, I can flip it over and scrape the other side. Uh, when you sharpen a regular scraper that is going to be doing a fine finish, uh, then you use a finer stone, uh, you don't raise as heavy of a burr, and then you remove that burr so you've got a nice sharp edge on it. So uh, maybe just leave just a tiny burr. I'm making a very coarse burr. This is a kind of a medium wheel. And uh, so here's how I sharpen it. And notice I have a little radius here. It's round dome. So I can pinpoint where I'm scraping. So I'm going to keep that rounded dome. <laughs> So it's flat on the top here, and there's I can feel a burr on both sides. The first thing I want to show you is the aggressiveness of a scraper like this. This is just a piece of wood that has got the saw marks on from the band saw. And how quickly I can take those saw marks off. So it's almost as fast as like taking a little plane because I've got chunks of wood that are just coming right off. So it quickly takes that, um, the sanding or the saw marks off and created a lot of sawdust. So on this mantle, it's kind of hard to see, but it's the, this line here, that line that goes all the way across is what I am going to remove with the uh, scraper. Then I'm going to, I see that we do have a little bit of saw marks going across. I'm going to scrape the whole surface and then I'm going to lightly touch it with the sandpaper. So I'm mixing mostly clear varnish with some of the stain, the Minwax stain. This is the small artist uh, brush, the bristle brush for oil paints. And I took some of the burnt umber and I put a little bit on a card here and I'm going to be using that for my palette and putting uh, some of the darker shadows in. That won't come till towards the end of the varnishing on the first coat. So I use a disposable brush. It's a bristle brush so you need a bristle brush for varnishing because it has the surface tension to pull the varnish where the nylon brush just slides right through. The nylon bristles are too smooth to varnish with. So I will come back with the burnt umber after I get the stain in just to increase, make the shadows a little bit deeper. Right. This little brush here, the throwaway, both of these are throwaway brushes. But I need to really get jam it into these small areas. In a good brush, it would ruin. That really builds up some really nice dark shadows in there.
Well, the first coat of varnish is dry, and the color turned out pretty nice. And so I'm just sanding it down. I'm using a fine sandpaper, and I'm getting it ready for the last coat of varnish. So I want the carving to uh, be quite smooth, even with all this texture. When you run a soft rag or uh, t-shirt or something over, I don't want it to be catching on any of the fibers. This will be a clear coat. It will be the uh, Helmsman Min Wax, and this is the satin. I'm still using the small uh, disposable brush to get way down into the crevices. And I'm putting in a lot of varnish. I also have my oil paints. Uh, the card that I had yesterday of oil paint is still uh, soft. Uh, so I can blend that in when I'm seeing an area I need to increase the shadows a little bit. Then I just work that right into the clear varnish.